Thanks for joining us at Right On Replicas, where we're proud to bring you the best scale model kit reviews on the planet. This review covers the F-16 Air Team 148 scale Ravel model kit number 85-5326. Although it was released a couple years ago, uh, it's still available online at retailers and in larger hobby shops. It's a skill level 2 kit molded in 77 parts in white uh, styrene with clear plastic canopy pieces. It includes instructions and an excellent set of colorful water slide decals. The F-16 was originally pressed in the 90s uh, and it was released as an ADF variant with some Sparrow and air-to-air -air missiles, but uh, this boxing replaces the Sparrows with some HARM radi anti-radiation missiles. Ironically, unless the Air Force team is planning to fire on the crowd, uh, you won't need them, and so we didn't add them to this uh, model. The finished dimensions are approximately 11 and 3 quarter inches long, 8 and an eighth inches high, and 8 and an eighth inches for wingspan. Here are the kit's contents, and as you can see, it's a pretty basic kit on just a few sprues uh, with some nice decals. And as you're going along, please remember to follow the manufacturer's safety and use guidelines for any of the products that you see mentioned here in the review. Here are the decals for this kit. As you can see, they're very colorful and the registry is good. There's also a couple of nice looking fighting lines there for the tail insignia, but um, I would strongly recommend that you use some of the aftermarket setting solutions to make sure that these large decals uh, settle in properly over the contours and stick to the body of your model. For the most part, uh, we'll be using liquid cement for the uh, glue and also occasionally super glue for things like uh, the, the fragile structures and some white glue for uh, installing the window glass. After looking over the instructions to get a pretty good idea of how the thing goes together, uh, go ahead and wash your parts in some mild soap and warm water and then uh, uh, let them air dry so that they don't pick up any debris or dust. So gather these parts, uh, cut them out for the cockpit, uh, the bulkhead, the tub, the seat, uh, instrument panel, and the side stick controller. And then assemble the seat and it's a four part assembly with two sides, a seat back, and a pull ring. And the last part is really small, so be careful not to lose it. After I added the side stick to the tub, um, don't add the aft bulkhead, part number 39, to the tub. This will be added after everything is uh, going to be glued to the fuselage. So I then painted all these parts with a light gray primer, uh, and I like the color because it uh, matches a dark gold gray found in most modern uh, airplanes. This uh, model kit doesn't have a lot of cockpit detail. Most of that is provided by decals, and that's a boon to the uh, intermediate and young modeler. Uh, but after the primer had dried, uh, I coated the cockpit in a gloss coat so that the uh, decals wouldn't be silvered. Then uh, they make up the consoles and the instrument panels, so be careful uh, not to ruin the markings uh, by you know touching them after you've uh, installed them onto the plates. Um, on the instrument panel then paint the center and lower console black for some uh, some depth. Then I went ahead and detailed the seat, uh, paint the cushions, the side pads, and the top flat black and after that had dried. Uh, pick out the harness and some dark gray and add some aluminum trappings for the buckles. Then uh, paint the ejection pull handles insignia yellow and add some hash marks with a drafting pen. On the side of the uh, Aces seat an oxygen tank is mounted there, so it's molded on, and I painted it dark green. Lastly, I traced the connectors and fittings with a drafting pen to make sure they're more noticeable. Now, on the cockpit tub, paint the control stick flat black, and I used a, a toothpick to hit the molded on buttons with some dark red. After this, uh, start adding the decals in, and uh, this was finished in short order, as the decals are... Uh, you know, nicely behaved if you if you treat them properly. Now, be aware that there's a cutout around the base of the control stick, so use this to line the decal up on that side. Uh, care will be rewarded here, so the end result's pretty nice looking. The same went for the instrument panel, 
and none of these required any real solvents to conform because of their size. This was a good indicator of how the rest of the markings would work from the decal sheet. They're very well done. After everything dried, I hit all cockpit parts with some uh, Model Master flat black, uh, dull coat enamel uh, to seal everything in and, and get rid of the shine there. And then I glued the seat into the tub and then the cockpit was complete. So now go ahead and um, get to the inside of the fuselage, uh, the top piece here, and, and go ahead and spray that uh, with the same primer you used for the cockpit or color and to match that and so that there's no white plastic visible through there. And then um, because it's like a primer that I used, it's really quick drying and goes on smooth. Now once that had dried, um, glue, I glued the cockpit into place and then added the aft bulkhead and that completes the interior assembly. Now finish uh, masking the uh, attached HUD part number 43 to the front glare shield and uh, paint the aft turtle deck flat black. Uh, this was a little tricky because you don't want to get paint on any of the previous work so make sure that that tape uh, is burnished down and sticks. So once you have that done you can glue the entire fuselage together uh, because nothing else needs to be fitted. Uh, and this is a tricky part because you have to line everything up so it doesn't uh, interfere with anything else. And uh, getting a crooked airplane is, is very disappointed. So you have to be careful and do some test fitting. Also make sure that you can fix or adjust anything you know, as you're going along uh, once you get the glue onto the seams. And like I said, we use liquid cement here. It's uh, thin and it dries well and it's a good solvent. Um, but I should mention here too that uh, you're going to use some clamping methods uh, that are your favorites. I use just a regular paper clamps and a piece of tape here around the uh, nose and to keep it all into place until it's dried. So now we can grab the canopy out of the kit box there and uh, I cut off all of the attachment points except for one. And then I'm going to dip this into uh, a little tub of the future floor polish and then uh, wick it off uh, on the edges to make sure we get a good even coat on there. So there you can uh, uh, let that dry thoroughly. In fact, uh, you're best to leave it overnight if you can. Uh, and then you can actually kind of handle it and rub the fingerprints off pretty easily to, you know, make sure that you clean up any edges and do any test fitting with the canopy. So I used some of the uh, Tamiya uh, masking tape here and then uh, using a razor blade uh, I cut and trimmed the canopy um, uh, frame out uh, so that it was uh, uh, ready for paint. I did some dry fitting here to make sure that the canopy fits snugly to the frame and uh, a little sand stick on the edges usually makes that happen so you might want to do that at this time. Then I uh, now I went ahead and glued the um, the canopy into place with some liquid cement uh, and cover the uh, cover the gap there so there's no uh, leak light leaks through there and that seals it off uh, and then I masked around the entire canopy and sprayed the area flat black and this makes the visible parts on the inside match the rest of the cockpit so I set this aside for a while to let the paint uh, cure. Now with the canopy area drying, I uh, set that aside to work on the intakes and on the F-16 kit that's sometimes challenging. Um, you get to two intake sides, a front lip, a blade vein, and a partial tunnel uh, that terminates at the top. And one good thing about the uh, setup is that it's all white, including the interior, um, so that uh, makes it a little e easier to finish. So we're going to uh, assemble those here. Um, by taking the two intake halves and inserting the tunnel and then I flood the joints with some liquid cement gives you a good strong bond to add the front lip to and then sand the bottom of the tunnel as it is housed partially in this front lip. Also you end up with a pretty visible gap around the sides of the joint here so um, I painted the blade vein uh, gun metal and inserted it through a hole between the front lip and the back half and it's a fragile part so be careful when you handle that and once completed uh, you can set that aside to dry thoroughly. 
So at this point, uh, you can glue the tail halves together and join that now to the uh, uh, fuselage. And make sure to line this up uh, because errors there will be very noticeable. So uh, make sure that the uh, positioning is correct. Then add the ray dome, the tail planes, uh, and the wing tip missile rails. Now, uh, the Thunderbirds typically don't carry weapons, <laughs> so as I mentioned, uh, we didn't add any armaments. But if you were to build the tactical version, you'd add the underwing pylons uh, 55 and 66 to the underside of the wings. So once that was dry, I uh, turned it over to work on the belly of the plane. And I also removed the molded on stubs uh, designed to more easily add the wing tip sidewinders um, because we won't install those. So I also thought that you know might have been better to add the tail section later on, uh, but it's already on there. You have to just really be careful that you don't snap it off because it's a thin joint. Um, so you could put that on perhaps later on. Uh, and I put some supports under the wings uh, so that I could turn it over and rest it on the tail and work on the bottom side. On all of the F-16, the landing gear bays are integral with the intake housing. Same thing on this model. So I added the front and aft bulkheads to the gear bay housing, uh, making sure that the fit was snug there and it was straightforward with no gaps. Then I added the uh, center divide, that's part 37, uh, followed by the intake. Now the intake sides make up the walls of the main gear bay and join to the back half uh, of the aft bulkhead. And there were some large gaps there and you'll need to fill them with some plastic stock and some putty, uh, your favorite uh, brand, to match the curve of that section. So once the intake was installed, I added the bay cover, that's part 31, and that kind of finishes off the airframe. One thing to note here is that the main landing gear legs are molded onto the aft bulkhead. Uh, so this is a solid part, but be careful not to warp it or snap the legs off when you're handling the model. Um, it could then start, you could then start looking at the surface for preparation for paint. And before doing this, I kind of rubbed the whole thing down with an old t-shirt to polish out the paint and make sure it uh, removes any fingerprints, etc. So once the uh, paint on the canopy was dried thoroughly, I could handle it. So I used uh, some paper towel to mask the intake and stuffing it in there and then sprayed the whole airframe with a gray primer. And that uh, allowed me to see any of the flaws uh, and seams that I needed to fix, uh, especially around the uh, tail, nose, wing uh, flaps and where all the major joints are. So I use what, uh, I use a um, uh, acrylic putty here, uh, you know, it comes in a powder and you add water and um, you can make it whatever consistency you want. It doesn't seem to shrink later and does a pretty good job. So I applied the putty to all the seams and let that dry uh, and then sanded it off. Uh, once you're done there, you can spray the airframe with primer again and reinspect and make sure that uh, everything looks good. Now you can move on to the base coat. So now I use the same uh, t-shirt material to rub down the entire model, kind of buff it, make sure it was all nice and smooth, and mounted a uh, piece of pipe, uh, a tubing actually, into the tailpipe section there to um, act as a mount for painting the, the frame. And then uh, I used some gloss white spray paint for this model. Um, and uh, in fact, it is a Rust-Oleum gloss white. and. Uh, Although white doesn't cover very well, this stuff uh, is about the right shade and color, dries nice and clean, um, and um, it, it uh, worked perfectly for this particular model. It's thin though, so you have to use thin coats. Uh, you can't just spray it on heavy or it'll run. So uh, after about three hours and six coats, it was done, and I was satisfied with the base coat, so I let that dry thoroughly. And I had also painted a piece of uh, sprue at the time so that I could handle the sprue and determine if the model was fully cured and dried for handling. So now we come to where the rubber hits the road and we're going to add the decals. Uh, and Ravel's decals in this kit are pretty good. Um, they're not excellent like some of the cartograph stuff, but they're really pretty good. Um, 
Now, there's a lot of planning that you need to do when you do markings like this. Uh, there's a lot of decals and they have to line up or they'll be noticed uh, on the finished model. So I started off by adding the wingtip and tail stripes top and bottom. And then be careful because the decals are oversized, uh, which allows them to fold over the leading and trailing edges. And work slowly one surface at a time. I did the tops first by making sure all the decals conformed as they should. And once uh, dry, uh, I trimmed any excess and moved on to the next section. Next, I added the uh, insignia, the Air Force markings, and the slot numbers. And then uh, next was the tail. And these decals are printed as one piece to cover the entire tail surface. So you really have to be careful to avoid uh, misalignment and wrinkles. And once uh, I had uh, tried applying one side as a whole decal to see what would happen, and it was a disaster uh, because the decal tore when I was trying to place it uh, and the base of the tail and, and then folded it over on top of itself. So uh, here's how to fix that. I, uh, I moved it around uh, with plenty of water and unfolded it with a toothpick and then kind of massaged the rest in with a Q-tip soaked in some uh, solvent, some uh, decal solvent, uh, to make sure that it would conform to the contours that it finally laid down on. And I went, it went to work immediately, kind of putting the decal into place on the surface. Uh, and learning from that mistake, I trimmed the other side in half where the tail meets the base and applied it in two sections. And it's much easier to do that way, so uh, that's what I would recommend uh, if you put your decals on, is to start by doing that. And it settled right down and looked great. So next I went to the uh, nose scallops, uh, and the red scallop is divided into, who, into two halves uh, on each side. So I, I was trying to be careful, and still uh, I went to line that up, but was left with a big lip on the one side. So after it had dried a little bit, I, I used a sharp hobby knife to trim off uh, what I could and touched up the rest with some Model Masters Insignia Red acrylic paint. I then added the uh, top of, of the blue scallop, being careful and, and lining it up with the uh, nose extension there. So with the uh, decals done on the top half here, uh, it was time to just set that aside to dry so that you don't mess any of the decals up when handling to do the bottom. So now we'll work on the uh, the belly decals and there's some gaps in the markings where you're going to have to use some paint uh, to cover those gaps and that means you'll need to match the paint with the color of the decals. Fortunately uh, the Model Master Insignia Blue uh, and Insignia Red Acrylic uh, were a very close match to the colors because these are uh, following the federal standard colors and I worked my way from the back to the front with the decals to make sure that the biggest ones lined up with each other. So the markings are again split in half uh, and cover from nose to tail making up distinctive Thunderbird shape, the biggest of these being on the wings. So after getting the fuselage lined up, uh, these went on pretty easily. One trick there is to use plenty of warm water so that you can move them around uh, until you get them into position. Then just uh, wipe off the rest with a soft cloth or tissue. So at this point, uh, I hadn't needed to use any more solvent except for the wing area here. On the underside, there's some hard points molded into the wings where the pylons would be attached. So uh, they're not really visible once you're done, but I uh, used the uh, decal setting solution and got the uh, decals to just kind of conform around those bumps and so they were not really visible then. So after the wing markings were done and had dried pretty well, I added the scallops under the nose and these surround the nose gear bay and required some trimming when done. Uh, then I painted the fuselage strakes insignia blue and added the striping decals and attached them to the fuselage. Once all the markings were dry, I painted the field arresting hook uh, insignia blue and installed that. And then I set everything aside to dry thoroughly overnight. So all that was left to do uh, was just a few touch-ups uh, around where the model and the insignia colors uh, are required where they didn't quite wrap around. And then seal the entire thing with some uh, future floor polish 
uh, to protect everything and seal it into place. Well, painting the exhaust uh, vents on these jets are kind of uh, a, an art form all by themselves. And you get a uh, burner ring and an exhaust nozzle molded in six parts here. So I started by cutting them all off from the uh, tree and then sanding the edges smooth. Then I painted the burner ring Model Master Titanium Metalizer. And after a few minutes I buffed it to a shine with the old t-shirt trick. Uh, then I dry brushed some aluminum, clear blue, and steel uh, around the raised details and then painted the center some uh, dirty white from Polyscale and added a smudge of uh, clear blue wash to give it a little bit of depth there. I painted the afterburner tunnel in the uh, for the model, uh, model Master Titanium and then I attached those to the back end. I then uh, turned to the pedals and uh, the tops of these were painted with some Tamiya uh, gold leaf and the insides painted flat black then I dry brushed some dirty white and various pastel powders to highlight some streaking and soot marks on the petals. Next I added the attachment ring and some bright silver uh, with the red arrow here uh, and then uh, then I added the uh, petals uh, which are a blue arrow here at the back of the model after that. And this is a nice area uh, for detailing and it makes a nice visual break uh, to uh, get uh, past all the white that's on the model plane. So about all that was left then was uh, adding the uh, wheels and the tires and a few odds and ends. So uh, the tires are provided uh, in three parts each, two for the tire and one for the hub which makes painting them pretty easy. Uh, if you clean up the edges they fit together very well. So I sprayed the tires flat black and the hubs gloss white. You can see the arrows here. Uh, and while I had the white out, I sprayed the remainder of the gear parts like the uh, strut supports, the interior of the gear doors, and the nose landing gear. Uh, that's the red arrow there. Uh, so I also picked out the uh, struts and landing gear in Model Master Chrome Silver uh, trim. And then I added the nose gear and the tires and let that dry. Now I can uh, turn her over on the uh, tires and I added the uh, nose probe part 33 and all of the gear doors and they, the gear doors themselves need to have the exterior painted in insignia blue and, and with a gloss coat uh, and I carefully removed the masking from the canopy once that was done and she was finished for the day. Well there you have it. This is a stunning looking subject model and it's actually a pretty easy builder for uh, the intermediate builder with the exception of the decals. Um, adding these decals makes this a much more difficult uh, build and you also quite often have to use some uh, extra paint touch up to match those decals. So uh, to me that makes this uh, suitable for intermediate builders. Now the markings were uh, really nice. Uh, I got a chance to brush up on techniques to get these guys folded in, uh, but once they were done they look really great. And a good modeler can turn out an awesome replica. And there's some other options in the kit for a nice tactical version, and the Falcon can be constructed from that. Uh, there's a few inaccuracies, but uh, it looks more or less like an F-16, so uh, for a 4th of July celebration, uh, this really typifies uh, the flyover you're going to see at the fireworks show. So uh, get one and put it on your shelf. Well, we hope you've liked this step-by-step -step premium model kit review. And so that you don't miss any more, subscribe to our YouTube channel. But you can find us on Facebook and also at our website, www.rightonreplicas.com. Thanks.